<laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, Robert Ackermann, a perfect start for our community of action theme. Ladies and gentlemen, dear partners from our universities and cities, Coimbra, Yash, Pavia, Poitiers, Salamanca, and Turku, dear associated partners, city representatives, dear student, distinguished guests. My name is Claudia Hillinger. I'm the head of the international office uh, at the university here, as well as the ECTU project lead for Jena. And it's my particular pleasure to welcome you all on behalf of Colleague Schiller University today to the sixth forum of our European campus of city universities, ECTU, in our Aula Magna. I would like to thank you all for traveling to Jena. We are very happy to have you all here with us the whole week. The sixth forum was developed in cooperation with the University Health Week, University Health Management, the team is here today, the EC2U Summer School, Healthy Campus, with our students, faculty, and the different work packages within our project. Together, we invite you to be part of our community of action, the overall theme of this week's program. The week will provide ample opportunities to network, to exchange ideas and knowledge, and to further develop EC2U jointly. In getting EC2U, as well as this forum on track, we had numerous supporters who helped develop a vision for EC2U by contributing their ideas, their time and engagement, and as well as money. Some of them will speak here in a few minutes, and I sincerely thank you for joining us today. I think we can proudly say EC2U has truly become a community of action over its first two and a half years. It is definitely an initiative of strategic importance to all our universities and cities. And with that, I invite our president, Professor Rosenthal, on stage for your welcome remarks. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my great pleasure to welcome all of you to the opening of the EC2U Forum Community in Action, whether you are here in the auditorium or whether you are joining us virtually. We are honored to have, us, to have with us today the Thuringian Minister for Economic Affairs, Science and Digital Society, Wolfgang Tiefensee. I would also like, I would also like to welcome the Mayor of the city of Jena, uh, Christian Gerlitz. Your presence enriches our conference. We are grateful for your participation. Allow me a moment to share a few words about the University of Jena, since European values and European identity form the bedrock upon which the university is built. They provide a solid foundation for our institution, reflected in our mission statement, light, life, and liberty. Established in 1558, during the transformative era of the Reformation, the University of Vienna embraces the principle of freedom of faith and conscience from the beginning. In the latter half of the 17th century, the, uni the university experienced a fl flourishing period when the Baroque archfather of German early enlightenment, Erhard Weigel, was professor here at our university. Among his notable students was Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, whose time at the university, university left, left a lasting impact on his intellectual development as a thought leader of the Enlightenment. Around 1800, the University of Vienna experienced the second golden era, solidifying its position as the epicenter of classical German philosophy. Professors such as Johann Gottlieb Fichte, Friedrich Wilhelm Josef Schelling, and Georg, Friedrich, und Georg Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel played pivotal roles in enhancing the university's intellectual reputation. During that time, we had a great science minister in the nearby Weimar, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. So he was the predecessor of, pre-pre-predecessor of uh, Wolfgang Tiefensee. <laughs> and he actually appointed um, Schiller, um, the, the poet and the historian, and I think that was the beginning of a new area, really, here in Jena. 
The university town of Jena became the starting point of a new literary movement of the years before 1800. The legendary Jena Romantics meeting in the autumn of 1799 was to become a significant event for modern literature and art, indeed for the cultural life of Europe. Around 1800, Jena University had an extraordinary international flair. The latest results of European science and philosophy were presented by renowned professors and students and scholars from many European countries who came to Jena for this reason. Over the centuries, the University of Jena became a beacon of intellectual excellence and top of groundbreaking research from philosophy to physics, from law to literature, from ecology to life science. Actually, the term ecology was coined here in Jena by Ernst Haeckel. The university became the core of a vibrant scientific network. With the highest density of research institutions in Germany in relation to its population, Jena offers a high performance infrastructure for research and development. A total of 12 non-university research institutions are based in our city today. We are convinced that the participation in networks enhance the ability to address complex challenges and promote inter internationalization and contribute to the advancements of science and scholarly endeavors. ECTU became an important networking partner over the past years. It's truly remarkable how quickly ECTU has made significant progress in shaping its initiatives. I would like to express my gratitude Gratitude to all those who contribute to the success of ECTU. Your contributions are invaluable and shape the very foundation of this project. We are delighted to host the forum in Jena and extend our sincere thanks to all those who have traveled here or are participating virtually. Your presence and engagement enrich this event, fostering diverse and meaningful discussions. As a network university, we are committed to collaboration, and alliances like ECTU hold high strategic and science policy significance. They enable us to tackle global challenges and drive positive change. For the University of Jena, the strategic importance of ECTU cannot be overstated. And I'm sure I also speak on behalf of the representatives who will follow me in addressing you. I would like to express gratitude to all those who support this endeavor, both through their commitment and financial contributions. I spe specifically acknowledge the European Union, Erasmus, the German Academic Exchange Service, the Federal Ministry for Education and Research, and the Thuringian Ministry for Economy, Science, and Digital Society for their report. Also, Professor Joibati Mukherjee, the President of the German Academic Exchange Ser Service, Sabine Verheyen, member of the European Parliament and chair of the Committee on Culture and Education, Vanessa de Pierre Santon, the head, of, head unit of the Directorate General for Education and Culture of the European Commission, and Professor Kessin Griegelstein, the president of the University in Freiburg and vice president of the German Rectors Conference for Medicine and Health Science, cannot be with us today. Great, we are grateful that they have conveyed their greetings to us today. I'm delighted to announce that we will hear greetings from Luisa Wöllner, student's representative of ECTU, and Professor Ludwig Tilly, our coordinator, the coordinator of ECTU, before Dr. Claudia Hillinger, head of our international office, presents the forum program. The forum serves as a showcase, highlighting the diverse range of topics that ECTU addresses and the numerous opportunities for engagement. I wish you all a fruitful and inspiring easy to you forum. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think we come right to the topic talking about support. Without support from political stakeholders at all levels, such an ambitious venture as the European University Initiative would not be thinkable in the first place. I would like to thank our Thuringian Ministry of Economic Affairs, Science and Digital Society again, who strongly encouraged and financially supports the participation in the ECTU Alliance. We are very grateful for that. Minister Tiefensee, welcome to the forum. 
please, the floor is yours. Dear Professor Rosenthal, dear Dr. Hillinger, Mr. Gallitz, Mayor of the city of Jena, dear representatives from foreign countries, participants from Germany, from Thuringia, ladies and gentlemen. The list of the speakers is very long, I think so. Oh, wait. I think it's better to uh, listen to the music instead of listening to the speeches. Yes, uh, my colleagues, they gave me uh, such a script. I think I need 30 minutes. You are sitting comfortable listening to me. A very warm welcome. Thank you very much for coming to Thuringia, to Jena. It's wonderful to have you here, and I hope you will have uh, time to see this wonderful city outside of Jena. It's wonderful in Thuringia. And uh, I'm very proud to uh, have the opportunity uh, to speak in front of such a wonderful audience. Thank you very much for the invitation. Right in front of you, the auditorium of Friedrich Schiller University, University you are looking at one of the most famous paintings by the Swiss painter Ferdinand Hodler. It represents a moment more than 200 years ago. It shows the departure of students for a major European war. In order to make such wars between European countries outdated, the path of European integration was taken after the Second World War. The progressive close interconnection of our societies got more and more important. The re result was the European Union. Europe is the hope to end this unfortunate warlike history and finally turn it into the past. Russia's current aggressive war against Ukraine shows us how important peacekeeping cooperation remains within the European Union. Because even we could like to believe otherwise, the war is not out of the world. European integration has many levels. One of the most important is cooperation, cooperation in research and teaching. On the one hand, this corresponds to the nature of the scientific community. International exchange is inherent in it. For another, the idea of cooperation is brought to life a million times at the universities. It is therefore not surprising that the European University Alliance were created. They cannot be understood without the project of a unified Europe. And they show what Europe has to offer besides common economic interests and EU law. A higher education based on the diversity of national and regional experiences, on intercultural exchange and joint creative work on the global future. We are proud that the University of Jena, a Thuringian university, you know, is also contributing strong impulses to this project. It is the first and so far the only university in the free state to be part of a European University Alliance. But it will no remain alone. Two other Thuringian universities have set out on the path. Bauhaus University, Weimar, and Ilmenau University of Technology. We are keeping our fingers crossed for both universities for a successful application. This shows how European the Thuringian universities are. The European Higher Education Alliance are the EU's central flagship project for the development of an European higher education area. They shall create lighthouses of European higher education cooperation, break new ground in cooperation, create highly visible 
pilot projects and further develop the common education system. This means that they will also shape the Ringian education and higher education landscape in the long term. We have a vital interest in Thuringian higher education institutions playing a part in this process and actively, actively shaping it. <coughs> and we have supported the ambitions of Thuringia's universities. We have been able to support the university in Jena, Mr. Rosenthal already pointed out, we also supported the application of the other universities. We supported the network of all three universities by organizing two discussion trips to Brussels. The midterm report in April 2022 shows, showed that the Campus Alliance has achieved its goals and achieved exceptionally good results. The program is focused on global challenges and they contribute to three of the 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals. We must be clear, the success of the European Higher Education Alliance does not come by itself. Therefore, I would like to mention three success factors here. The number one success factor is of course, the continued good work of EC2U and all the other alliances. The second is the support from the surrounding actors. Finally, the third success factor is sustainable funding. Here I see a considerable need for action because the funding from the European Union has so far been conceived more as startup funding. That means without any perspective beyond the fifth call. Here the European Commission is called upon to ensure sustainability and reliability. I would also like to warn against overloading. The AHCA and also EC2U are important innovation agents for European higher education policy. But they cannot perform wonders. And they should not be misunderstood as instruments to question the, the existing educational sovereignty of the member states and the countries. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, finally, I wish the European campus of city universities an outstanding success overall. For this, I first wish you the success of the application for the second funding phase and even more immediately an inspiring six forum of your alliance here in Thuringian's most important science and technology location. We need scientific integration more than ever. It is a significant contribution to the success of the great European peace project. Feel well in Jena, feel well in Thuringia, and again, you must have time to go out, not only sit in rooms, you have to look what's going on in Thuringia. Thank you very much for coming. All the best to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister Tiefensee, for this clear and inspiring remarks. Uh, the community of action will help us in getting out as well. So there are some outdoor activities planned, plenty. Uh, plenty of them. So we would like to our guests also to see some uh, of the surrounding here. When I look at the national level, uh, the German Rectors Conference as a representation of German universities is also a very strong promoter and has been an adamant support of internationalization processes at the universities, including ours. Professor Kerstin Kriegelstein, Vice President for University Medicine and Health Science of the German Rectors Conference, 
and also rector of the Albert Ludwig University of Freiburg, which is a member of the European campus UCOR. Uh, thank you for taking the time to join us online. Uh, I ask for your understanding that we today do not strictly follow protocol because some of our speakers have some time limitations. And this is why we sincerely appreciate Professor Kriegelstein that you took the time to speak to us today. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Dear Professor Rosenthal, dear colleagues, dear students, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the German Rectors Conference, I'm very pleased to welcome you today to the six EC2U Forum. Since Emmanuel Macron's speech almost six years ago, the EU program that followed relatively quick, quickly afterwards, we as the German Rectors Conference, the umbrella organization of German universities, have been following and accompanying the gradually emerging alliances with great interest. The European alliances are an ambitious project that offers many opportunities, but also comes with many challenges. In the best case, the alliances have the potential to become an important cornerstone of a European identity. Undeniably, they have acted as innovation drivers for study and teaching and have accelerated the pace of internationalization processes. It is desirable that the alliances will contribute to educational justice in Europe. They also convey European values and the sense of engagement with Europe and thereby raise the question, what exactly do we mean by European universities? Only if this question is addressed, the alliances can become a cornerstone of a European identity. A cornerstone that is, of course, more important than ever. The centrifugal forces in the EU are high, and the current political stability is fragile. Against this background, too, the alliances have an important function. In a surprisingly brief period of time, the alliances have become an important tool in EU higher education policy. European degree, virtual short-term mobility, micro-credentials, these are just a few examples of the topics from European higher education policy for which the alliances have taken on an important role. At the same time, the alliances are confronted with the logic of fixed-term funded projects. This is a major challenge, given that the resources invested and the desired long-term nature of the cooperation. All in all, the development that has taken place in the past six years since Emmanuel Macron's speech is quite impressive. What impresses us most is the great commitment and the significant dedication with which universities in Germany and their partners across Europe are driving the project forward. This dynamism and commitment extend far beyond the EU program and rely on the commitment of all members of participating universities. On behalf of the German Rectors Conference, I wish you a successful and fruitful forum, stimulating discussions and successful communities of action. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Kriegelstein. And again, thank you for being with us today. Mm -hmm. Now, looking at the European level, this is where the vision for European universities develop, was developed <clears throat> with the goal of strengthening strategic partnerships across Europe with, and I quote, the ambitious vision of an innovative, globally competitive and attractive European education and research area in full synergy by helping to boost the excellence dimension of higher education, research and innovation while promoting gender equality, inclusiveness and equity, allowing for seamless and ambitious transnational cooperation, inspiring the transformation of higher education. I think this is what we're trying to accomplish uh, in ec 2 u 
we are also looking not only at the knowledge triangle that is mentioned here, but also the knowledge square. So transfer to society, including society, including the citizens is an important factor. <clears throat> this is why we choose the topic community of action. This is why we want to work with the cities, with our communities. And health and well-being are very important components of this approach. Um, I'm pleased to present a video read. Oh, uh, Vanessa? Yes, I see. As you wish, it can be me, it can be a no, video. Please, as you, then we, as you wish. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome to the forum. We're happy to, to see you here. Then I transfer directly the word to you. Um, Vanessa de Villa Santon, the head of the unit at Director General for Education and Culture at the European Commission, who can speak better to issue to you the European University Initiative. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, thank you very much. It's a real pleasure to be with all of you this afternoon, dear Professor Rosenthal and all members of the CTU European University. I would like to really congratulate all of you for all your efforts, for all the fantastic work that you have already done implementation and creation of this uh, unique European uh, university, which is really focused on the sustainable development goals and to equip all the, the young generation, all your students in, in your different universities that are members of the European University, on being really actors of change. As you see, you are, as you said, you are creating really a community of action for your students to be actors of change already during their studies and of course preparing them for really being uh, acting in the society in the future towards a sustainable environment and a sustainable planet. So really excellent progress in view of the ambitious objectives and the ambitious vision that has been proposed for this initiative to Together with all the heads of governments and all the ministers responsible for higher education, you have been very active in developing a, tr a joint transnational European campus for you students to be able to, to study together with their peers from your different uh, universities, to work in interdisciplinary teams to address the sustainable development goals. So, we are very pleased to see that you have already developed three virtual institutes for good health and well-being, for quality education, for sustainable cities and communities. And you have already developed joint programs in these different uh, thematics already at master level, but we hope that you will not stop here and develop even more joint activities, including a bachelor level at doctoral level. So we are very happy that you have applied for the next phase of development of your European University and we wish you a lot of success um, in, this, uh, in this application. The Commission will present the results just before the summer and uh, wish you a, a lot of success. The objective for you in this second phase will be to mainstream these joint activities that you have put in place to mainstream them across your faculties, across your member universities, so that a large majority of your students, of your staff, of your researchers can benefit from this deeper cooperation, deeper joint transnational cooperation to deliver more innovative pedagogies like the uh, entrepreneurial academy that you have uh, set up and also to remove silos between educational research and innovation we've seen how much you have already uh, um, progressed on on that front so we know that it's a very ambitious uh, initiative uh, ministers the council have set a, a very high objective they really believe in the potential of this initiative to prepare you for the universities of the future to prepare for the green and digital transition and all the different priorities that we have presented last year in the european strategy for universities 
So it's highly ambitious, but we are there to support and to accompany you with more budget, and that's the objective of the of the second call to which you apply, but also with policy support. And we know that uh, putting together a, a joint program with all your members is not always easy, despite almost 25 years of the Bologna process. And we are very happy that EC2U European University is taking an active role in the experimentation call that we have uh, that we have just uh, launched this spring to experiment first a joint European degree label and possibly in the future a joint European degree to valorize for the students, for your universities, all the, the innovative work that you are doing together so that your um, students can really get into the, the labor market with a, a label and possibly in the future a degree to show um, the, the, the excellence in terms of competencies competencies and skills that they will have developed within your European uh, university. We have also adopted um, very um, ambitious council recommendations last year to address some of the challenges that you are facing, not only you, but also all European universities when it comes to multilingualism, digitalization, accreditation. So we are really working hand in hand with all the member states to address all these challenges. And by addressing them, this will benefit the entire higher education sector across Europe that is necessary to build, as you said in the introduction, a European education area together with a European research area and the European higher education area. So all in all, my congratulations, and I really wish you a fruitful forum to continue uh, in this direction, because as I said, this initiative that is there to stay, and there is a lot of uh, political support as well as expectations from all your work. So I wish you good luck and fruitful conference. Thank you. Thank you very much. And let me say that we all are very grateful for the opportunity that has, has been given to us through the European University Initiative. Thank you. We are now getting back to Germany. Uh, the German Academic Exchange Service is one of our closest and strongest partners in developing global networks and academic collaborations worldwide. We receive ample support, not only through a solid knowledge base and expertise that is shared with us, but also through generous project funding. The National Initiative European Universities Networks allows us here in Jena to implement accompanying activities and programs that directly and indirectly contribute to the portfolio of milestones and deliverables set in EC2U. Professor Mukherjee, the president of the German Academic Exchange Service, could not join us today, but sends a message of greeting and allow me to read that to you. Dear Professor Rosenthal, uh, dear Mrs. Verheyen, dear Mr. Tiefensee, dear Professor Kriegelstein, dear Ms. Debye Sonton, dear Mr. Gerlitz, dear colleagues, honored guests of the Alliance EC2U from Portugal, Romania, Germany, Italy, France, Spain, and Finland, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, thank you very much for your kind invitation to this year's EC2U Forum. Much to my regret, I'm not able to take part in person, but as president of the German Academic Exchange Service, I feel very honored to send a short welcoming address. This forum is a symbol of success for the level of international cooperation and especially for the level of European integration within the Alliance EC2U has achieved. I would like to warmly congratulate all of the partners involved. EC2U, which stands for European Campus of City Universities, is a very special alliance indeed. Seamless mobility between currently seven universities and associated cities will be even stronger in the years to come. Today, 
two years remain to achieve Macron's vision, which goes far beyond an ordinary cooperation project. When a European University Alliance really wants to be become one university, the idea of a strategic partnership is not enough. The bonds that are created must be firmly based on friendship, trust, and shared values. This is quite similar to a good personal friendship, which doesn't rely only on functional strategic goals, but also on emotions, openness, honesty, acceptance, cooperativeness. I therefore suggest to refer and to put in practice Macron's vision not only as strategic partnerships, but as institutional friendships. An institutional friendship as a conceptual, intellectual, organizational, and emotional bond between higher education institutions in Europe. And ECTU, to you, your alliance could certainly be in the vanguard of alliances realizing this particular vision. Ladies and gentlemen, you represent some of the oldest and greatest universities in Europe. You all stand in a tradition of pioneers, optimists, and visionaries. We all believe in the power of research, of teaching and learning, and of critical thinking, and in the value of our shared European heritage and culture. Thus, I'm sure that we will all are eager to drive forward the European higher education area to improve future gener generations' lives on our continent. In my personal vision, the European universities are places of mutual inspiration, educational innovation, and excellent research. I strongly believe that this vision becomes reality when strategic partners turn into institutional friends. In this sense, I would like to wish you a fruitful and inspiring event. Jobrato Mukherjee. Our thanks go to the AD, and we will convey that in person at the next occasion. As has been mentioned a couple of times, uh, one of the main topics of this week's program is health and well-being. Sabine Verheyen, German Member of Parliament, the European Parliament, and Chair of the Committee on Culture and Education puts a strong emphasis on this topic. She could not join us directly today, but sends us a video greeting, please. Dear Professor Rosenthal, distinguished guests of the third forum of the European campus of Un City Universities in Jena. I'm very pleased to be able to address you at this very important and timely event via video message, especially as it focus focuses inter alia on good health and well-being. Health is one of the highest goods we have. However, when we talk about health, the first association is usually our physical well-being. Too often we forget about mental health, which is at least as important. Fortunately, especially in the wake of the pandemic, we have seen more public attention to this important issue. The awareness and realization that we need to do much more than in the past has increased. We should use this momentum to move forward. As part of this, the European Commission will present a new comprehensive approach to mental health this year. The aim is to improve understanding of mental health issues and how to address them. Also, we in the European Parliament, particularly in the Committee on Culture and Education, are aware of the importance of mental health, especially among young people, and have already addressed the issue on several occasions. It should be mentioned that although mental health issues can affect anyone at any age, those affecting children and young people require immediate attention to prevent long-lasting consequences into adulthood. Therefore, it is a cr it's crucial to continue raising awareness of this issue. In addition, the various reports that focused on the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic restrictions on the mental health of children and young people, I would also like to mention our flagship Erasmus Plus education program. 
it offers additional funding opportunities for participants with physical, health-related and even mental health conditions through the Erasmus Plus special funding. However, we should further strengthen our commitment to young people's mental health. Here we can learn a lot from our partners like you in the Erasmus Plus programs, sharing ideas, experiences and best practices to help improve mental health. In this context, I would like to particularly highlight the University Alliance's My Mobile Tutor app, which you developed to support students and staff during their stays abroad. It makes students feel at home quickly in the different cities of the Alliance. The Erasmus Plus program could learn from this excellent project. It could also make an uh, important contribution to students' mental health, because feeling at home is an important part of well-being. Finally, I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate the University Alliance on all its achievements over the last two and a half years. I was very pleased to learn that the Alliance not only achieved its goals, but also even surpassed them. The establishment of three master's programs and the three virtual institutes are just a few examples. And I look forward to the future success with truly vibrant European projects. Now I wish you a successful event with fruitful discussions. Many thanks. Thank you very much. And now we get back to the city of Jena, where we are. I would like to welcome Christian Gerlitz, mayor of the city of Jena. The city of Jena has is and has been over centuries a highly esteemed partner of the university. The university is deeply rooted in the city and, and vice versa, which is uh, true for all our partners and uh, in the alliance. I would particularly like to thank the city for their tremendous engagement in the alliance in supporting the forum, um, various activities. So thank you very much, please. Dear Minister Tiefensee, dear Professor Rosenthal, dear rectors and vice rectors, dear Professor Tilly, dear students and representatives of the associated partners, dear representatives of the cities, dear excellencies who have come to Jena or connected online, dear ladies and gentlemen. Science drives to, uh, on the fruitful exchange of knowledge on meeting people as equals, on respect and appreciation of other opinions, and on critical dialogue. The world is growing closer together despite the global political conflicts we are currently experiencing. The problems and challenges that we are facing right now, like climate change and the surge of authoritarian regimes around the world require a dialogue across geographical and political borders. For this reason, it is most important that science cooperates and works together, that students are introduced to cross-border exchange right from the start. It doesn't matter at all whether the students stay in academia or seek careers in business or administration. The openness to exchange across borders will remain and will enrich the work even then. On the other hand, it is more important than ever that politics, business, city and state administration and society as a whole take scientific findings seriously and include them in their day-to-day -day decisions. With the help of science, humanity has changed the world, unfortunately, not always to the better. Humans have impacted the climate, making our livelihoods more vulnerable than ever. Humans wage wars that kill, endure, and make countless people flee their countries. I strongly believe that only with the help of science we will help we be we will be able to build a future worth living on this planet. That is why an international network like IC2U is so important in general for us as a city 
in particular. It is very important for Jena to be part of this network as an associated partner, because just as the university is extremely linked to our city, science is also becoming increasingly important in the administrative activities of the municipality. Jena is unthinkable without its university. The great economic success of the city is based on science. Karl Zeiss, Ernst Abbe, and Otto Schott founded the optical industry in Jena about 150 years ago. Its economic success was based on scientific knowledge, which is still the basis of the city's success today. Today, big names from Jena are world famous. Zeiss, Jena Optik and Schott. And there are a number of smaller ones, perhaps not as famous, but just as high tech and successful. Jena, also called the cradle of the European optics and photonic industries, combines tradition and high-tech industry with strong, innovative companies. With this recipe for success, Jena has established itself as a leading high-tech center in Thuringia and Germany. Proportionally, this is where the majority of high-tech companies are founded nationwide. The top-notch educational landscape including two universities and 12 non-university research institutes and the research range of the companies make Jena a place where ID flourish. Jena is a very successful city, but we also have to deal with the side effects of the success. Although Jena is a very young city, we feel the impacts of the democratic, demographic development. Specialists of a, of, for the economy have become a rare community the city urgently needs immigration from abroad in order to be able to fill all vacancies in the future. Housing in Jena is expensive and the real estate market is tense. We are already working to build more apartments, but it is difficult to keep up with the steady growth. We have to develop new commercial areas for companies. To this end, we cooperate closely with the surrounding region. In many ways, all our city faces similar challenges. It is therefore good and important that the, science, uh, the cities of the IC2U network are in close contact so we can learn from each other. The Citizen Science event right after this opening event provides a very good example of this. If you want to see more of our beautiful city, you can discover a lot of things. Jena is not only about businesses and science, it is also a young and lively city with a rich cultural offer. And all this embedded in a beautiful landscape along the Saal River. Enjoy your stay in Jena, exchange ideas with colleagues and expand the IC2U network. We are very happy to be this year's host town and welcome all to you in Jena. Mr. Gallitz, thank you very much. And we will hear later on in the afternoon about some good examples of cooperation between the university and the city jointly with uh, representatives from our partner cities. So please join us for that session. What would a university be without its students? We all are very impressed and highly appreciate the deep engagement of our student community across ECTU. I welcome Luisa Wöllner, president of the Jena Erasmus Student Network, to deliver a few remarks on the students' views and perspectives, wishes to ECTU. Please, the stage is yours. Thank you for those kind words. I warmly welcome everyone present here today, and especially the students participating in the sixth ECTU forum, and also the participants of the Health Week and the Summer School who would also take place this week. It is my honor to speak on behalf of the students and the whole ESN team here in Jena. I still remember the first time when I heard about ECTU, namely when I applied to be part of Jena's student delegation for the first in-person forum in Salamanca. Back then, I was wondering what EC2U was all about, discovering the scope of this alliance and wondering what the future will take for this. With this, I was probably not alone. 
But since then, I participated in the think tank about circular economy and was part of the forum Pavia and Yash. Today, I'm standing here as the president of the Erasmus Student Network in Jena and giving the voice to the students of this alliance. So as you can tell, a lot of, a lot of things has happened for me personally, but also professionally. And this is due to the influence of ECTU. The memories I made, the experience I gained, and the people I've met had such a huge impact. And with this, I'm not alone. Everyone who has a role in this alliance has been impacted by ECTU. Especially also ESN being one of the associated partners. In Jena, the association is responsible not only for the students or the international students of the Friedrich Schiller Universität, but also for the Ernst Abbe University of Applied Science. We encourage intercultural exchange and cultural understanding, but also promote the possibilities to go abroad. The six main causes of ESN, um, three of them being youth and education, health and well-being and sustainability, overlap with the virtual institutes of EC2U, which are, for instance, represented in the master's programs, just to highlight some of the projects ECTU is pursuing. ESN and the Alliance have both the ambition to develop a seamless mobility between the participating universities, but also in Europe in general. Because these two networks and communities share the same values, their cooperation, cooperation is of such great importance. For ESN, we not only have the opportunity to strengthen the connections and relations within the ESN networks and with other particip participants of the sections, but we have the chance to reach far beyond this network onto a broader European level. It gives us, as a small local section, the opportunity to grow and to gain more intercultural competences. But more importantly, EC2U provides many opportunities for students to be involved and to take action. This is why our role as representatives of the students within the Alliance is again of such great importance. We are not only encouraged to strengthen the bonds between the participating universities, now also including Linz in Austria and Liv in Ukraine, but we are also given the opportunity to directly communicate the wishes, needs and ideas of students, to challenge and discuss the process of decision making, and hence directly be involved in the future of studying in Europe. Newly developed ideas and theoretically thought matters can be put into practice by us. With the newly formed Student Council and the Student Handbook that is currently written by the student representatives, we are officially confirming the role of students, which makes me really happy to experience. For this week, I'm looking forward to lively and yet productive discussion and debates, being given this platform to share our thoughts and to learn from our, each other's diverse cultural differences and backgrounds, but also professional backgrounds, to take action and to lead the way for future EC2U generations. Considering all of this, I want to thank you, the entire ESN YEMA team, as well as the numerous volunteers who worked so hard during the previous weeks to make this event possible and who support us during the following days. I also want to thank the City of Vienna and the University of Vienna, which without them, this also wouldn't have been possible. And as Frau Hillinger already said, thank you for everyone who traveled to Jena to be part of this. Thank you. Grazie mille. Muchas gracias. Obrigada. Jakuju. Kitos. Multumes. Merci beaucoup. Und danke. I really hope you enjoy your time in Jena and that you have time to discover our beautiful city and that we can jointly be the best community of action we could ever imagine. And in the end, finally, I just want to say, as we have all seen yesterday at the planetarium, easy to you, we rock the stars. Thank you very much. Uh, that was a really inspiring uh, speech. Thank you, Luisa. So now we have talked a lot of the community of action in the week. Uh, allow me to give you a very brief fly through the program, what to expect in the next few days. Luisa has already mentioned a little bit 
Um, the opening of the forum is the big, big start, of course. Um, we have a coffee break and then the following session, as I mentioned previously, will be city science. We engage the city representatives, university partners, to showcase some of the joint projects collaboration in the field of cultural heritage and digitization. So this will be a very interesting session. Please stay for that. After that session, um, we have a botanical surprise for you. Uh, don't leave, follow some of the helpers, follow Dana Strauss, um, bring your badges and wait for the surprise. Please join us for that. Tomorrow, we will have a focus on healthy campus in the morning, a lecture at eight o'clock, persons who are up early. You can also join a yoga session in the morning by our the sports team. At 10 o'clock, we have uh, the EC2U Virtual Institute's presentation with a keynote and panel discussion on the topic of shaping social change taking action for sustainable development, followed by three tracks um, covering the three thematic pillars of, of our alliance. So we will have a climate walk, we will have a healthy campus program, and we will have cultural um, co um, co intercultural cooperation in academia as a subject and topic. In the afternoon, uh, there will be a higher education round table tomorrow at the Rosensäle. European universities placing student and staff mental health at the center. It will be an interesting panel discussions with contributions from other alliances who will share their expertise with us. A guided mindful walk in the garden will round up the program tomorrow before you all come to the conference dinner, to which I would cordially invite you. And just a reminder, it's not in the folks house where we have been yesterday, but in the folks bar. Um, see you all there tomorrow evening. On Thursday, we start with a think tank session in the morning. Social innovation in times of crisis will be the main topic and focus. Uh, the think tanks have taken place in the different locations individually, and this will be the occasion to share the results, discuss the results. The project RI4C2, which is the Horizon 2020 accompanying project, focus on innovation and a research agenda, will do a presentation. It will be a panel discussion in two sessions at 11.30 tomorrow, connecting the dots, sustainable and innovative research collaboration across disciplines, universities, and cities. Poster sessions will round up that uh, part of the program, and tomorrow and um, Friday, Thursday afternoon will be one very important event, Voice of Students, where I invite you to join us and listen to student perspectives and views and, and wishes. So this is the fly through. We have a lot of uh, accompanying activities going on throughout the city on the Abbey campus and foyer uh, organized by our health management team. So feel free to join those activities, uh, get informed about any issue of health and well-being that you wanted to know. And in general, please enjoy the forum use the opportunity to connect and mingle and exchange new ideas. With that, um, last but not least, one of the most important persons um, is to speak up right now, which is uh, Professor Ludovic Tilly. He is Vice Rector for European Networks at the University of Poitiers, and he is the Coordinator General of our EC2U Alliance. And Ludovic, please. So I am the last person between you and the coffee break. So I will do my best to be very short. 
And uh, maybe I should say that what else could I add after the beautiful speech from Rila? Thank you very much. It was uh, really inspiring indeed. Um, a community of action, that's the weak motto, but this is actually perfectly describing the Sutu Alliance. A community, indeed, it is a community composed of students, teachers, researchers, administrative staff, partners and citizens. An action. This is indeed an action to support the C2U entire community. But a community of action is also needed at policy level. And today, as you could see, we had representatives from the European Commission, the European Parliament, ministries and other policymakers. And now I'm speaking to them. We also need your support to provide sustainability to the C2 Alliance, both politically and financially. So the action is also on your side. The EC2U actors are fully engaged into making our community of action a long standing reality. Are you too? And I would like to finally remind that EC2U stands for European Campus of City Universities, as you all know now. But it is also empower, connect, cooperate, unite. So I count on you all and I wish you a great six EC2 forum in Vienna. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all for joining us for that session. Before we go into the coffee break, we will hear some music by Robert Ackermann, Aki, to loosen you up a little bit after sitting for an hour uh, in the aula. And the floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you.